Hi, Jay Barnett. Oh, Amarinda, you are on time, my love. Right, here we go. Let's put you on. Have we got it to work? Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We are live. Don't say fuck or bugger. <laughs> oh my god, I'm fine. It's been too long. It's, it's been, been so long. I'm just going to sort out my lighting. So, so I know that the summer is going because normally if I do an Insta Live at this time, it's still really bright outside because I'm sort of in my garden. And yeah. Just going, man. It's depressing I... times. Sad times, huh? It, do, you know, do you know what? It's like autumn's coming now as well. It's I like... know. Tell me about it. Although I do, oh. like, I do like the autumn, but I, but I love the summer. I oh, know. Well, I thought that this. Oh that was... my god! Where did you get that from? Oh, I don't know. It was gifted to me. Well, it was given to me by a friend of mine uh, for my birthday. Um, that is so cool. I love it. And I have to say, I don't know about anybody else, but when you're going through cancer treatment and it, you have a birthday, you get much better presents. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Silver lining. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so, so much for joining me. Are you at work or are you home? Oh, no, I'm home. I'm home. home. Yeah. So, for anybody who doesn't know, do I call you Doctor? Do I call you Amarinda? What shall I call you? Um, Helen, you can call me whatever you want. Oh, I love that. Uh, so, you are a dentist, basically, by trade, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Qualified about four years ago. Great. And we met because we were at a uh, sort of a, a, an aware, a fundraising sort of breast cancer event. Um, That's it. Thing yeah. A year ago. And you kind of always stayed on my mind because I suffered so much when I was going yeah. through treatment. I suffered really badly with, mm. um, well, the, my, my worst thing was mouth ulcers, but I've always been kind of predisposed to ulcers. Yeah. They were excruciating. Um, mm. And then when I, when I went on treatment, oh my God, it just went through the roof to the point where some days I could barely eat or drink. And so many other people have said the same thing to me that they mm. suffer or they're suffering now or, or they also suffered. And, and lots of people have said, you know, um, I think bicarbonate of soda was yeah. one yeah. thing. Yeah, mixed with water, yeah. Water. So you have heard that. Is that something that's good for ulcers or is that good for just general? That's actually really good for dry mouth and ulcers as well. So bicarbonate of soda has got healing and anti-inflammatory properties in that. If you mix bicarbonate like a teaspoon in water and even a quarter teaspoon of a bit of salt in that as well, they disinfect and they heal the mouth quite a lot. Um, so yeah, so these are really good home remedies. And the good thing about this is that there's no anesthetic, there's no alcohol, it's a natural home remedy. So you're not going to get any other side effects from it, which is why it's really, really good and recommended. Oh, uh, that's good. That's good to know. Because I was kind of prescribed certain things, gel clair and yeah. um, Diflam ring. Diflam spray, yeah. And, and not very much seemed to touch the sides, unfortunately. But... Mm. Um, and it, and it has, it took a while after my treatment as well, um, mm. trying to heal up. But I wonder if, um, we start from the very beginning, mm. things that you can do or things that you should do once you've had a diagnosis, you were saying the other day to me that actually it's a, it's a good thing to get in to see your dentist. They should be part of your, almost part of your treatment plan. Yeah. Because I, I um, actually went to see my dentist just before I started chemo and they said one of my teeth was embedded, a wisdom tooth. Yeah. What we don't want is that to flare up whilst you're on treatment. Yeah. So let, let's just take it out now. So I ended up um, having that done a couple of days before I started chemo. Um, and they said that, that you know, having, te having extracted it, they, was, they were really glad that they had done it. So why, what, what are your recommendations if somebody comes to you to say that they've got 
cancer, they're about to start cancer treatment, what should we do? So I go through a thorough medical history and then when they tell me they're about to start cancer, for example, um, we do a thorough checkup. So any treatment that they need doing should be done before they start any chemotherapy. Now, the reason for this is because, you know, from your side effects, for example, you get really painful gums, ulcers as well. If your oral hygiene and your gum disease is all stabilized before that, it will make, it will make those side effects a lot less severe. Mm. But the reason why your teeth needed to be taken out before is because lots of cancer patients are on a certain medication called bisphosphonate. Now, these medications can cause exposed bone not to heal after an extraction. So they're very, very strong medicines, which is why you need all your extractions, fillings, severe um, gum disease treated before this. Because if you get this really severe treatment while you're on the chemotherapy, there's complications with healing up of those sockets and your gums. Oh, that's see. why. Yeah, that's why you need to get everything stabilized before you start your chemo. Right. So what, what, what's it called? Bio what? Biophosphonate? Abysphosphonate. Oh, so if I, ha if I was on that or not. So have you, do you, do you, have you got any of your medicines that you were on? Do you remember any of them on the top of your head? Did any of them end in dronic acid? No. Paclitaxel. Oh, I was on. I did EC, which is... <laughs> that is so joke. <laughs> right. Call it the red devil. Okay, so Helen. Mm. No, what? don't worry if you don't know the names. Say like you've started your chemo, your mid-chemo or your after. Take your list of all your medica medications and give them to your dentist and they'll scan them on. And I look up every medicine, if I even have, haven't heard the name of it, and we see what the medicines are, what category. So don't worry too much if you lot don't know what medicines they are. Take them to your dentist and scan them in. Because mm. these bisphosphonates, even after you finish chemotherapy, they stay in your system for over 10 years. Yeah. It's really? That long? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're all clear from cancer and you haven't had chemo for 10 years, it can still be in your bone. So if you need a tooth taken out in the next 10 years, you can still have those complications which is why you just got to go to your dentist, even when you're all clean, had your chemo, go every six months. So you don't need an extraction. So you don't need any teeth taken out. Like right. it, it's just, but take home message, go to your dentist every six months before, during, after. Yeah, it's, it's funny because actually it's not some, I don't know about anybody else, but it's not really something that, um, that you're told about. No, and you're not. Mm. The other thing that kind of gets me a little bit is, um, when you're on cancer treatment in this country, you get five years of free, um, like prescriptions and yep. uh, sort of medical care afterwards. So any prescription drugs, I don't have to pay for at the moment, not for another few years. But it's not the same for dental work, and I and it's no. frustrating. That's the financial difficulty, you know. During, um, do you know? I totally agree. Yeah. I do not I do not understand why it's not. I think it should be free, especially like if you're not working, you're sick of work. Of course, it should be free for that. And like, for, for example, pregnant women, of course, they should have free dental treatment. And they do a year while they're pregnant and the year after. And it should be a minimum of that for cancer patients. And I agree with that. So do they so do cancer patients not even get a year of it? I'm pretty sure they don't, do they? They don't get anything. no nothing. Ab absolutely nothing. Um, when I. When one of the one of the major side effects of cancer treatment are mouth complications. That's the thing. So maybe that's something we can look into the future and possibly yeah. change that because I strongly believe that that should be changed. Yeah, I, c I can see us going and knocking on number ten again. Helen, shall we do it? I think we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> that gold sparkly jacket. Oh my god, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I know. <laughs> what can, what is your advice? So we've got our advice for what you've first been given um a diagnosis and you go and you check it in, you go and see your see your yeah. dentist. 
what about what can you do during treatment to maintain a good it's about to say a right good, good mouth a good mouth 100 percent. so i'm going to start with the basics so you you brush your two minutes morning and night and you spit don't rinse that toothpaste out now if you've got painful ulcers get a soft bristle toothbrush you don't need a hard one as long as you're getting that fluoride on that toothpaste and trying to clean it do that okay cleaning between your teeth is important with floss or little individual brushes because if you get a buildup of plaque and calculus that causes gingivitis and flaming gums yeah. that's going to make your ulcers and sore mouth even worse so yeah. you need to clean between your teeth now with mouthwash for example listerine is a bit sore on my gums but my parents find listerine fine right. it, every mouthwash is different you just need to see what works for you now with mouthwash you actually can dilute it down so water. with water yeah if it's a bit strong dilute it down with a, just a little bit of water half and half for example and you must do mouthwash a different time to brushing your teeth now a few years ago i don't know what i had it, i had lots of ulcers in my mouth it, it came and went and it was awful it was really really bad so i can't imagine what you guys are going through now to keep my oral hygiene clean there's this um cream called aura gel so aura gel is a little cream and it's got a bit of anesthetic in it it's normally for a toothache but you can use it on mouth ulcers and this has got anesthetic and it temporarily numbs it up so when i needed to brush my teeth in the morning and the afternoon yeah. or the evening i put it on then i brush my teeth and, right. and then it, then it wore off so i only put it on as of when i need it because it's only a temporary solution but helen your ulcers were well bad they look so painful and I had that on both sides. And that was just, I mean, I've got a million bloody photographs of them. But um, that was when it was particularly bad. But not only would I have that, but I'd also get a load of, like, spots on my tongue. Oh, uh, it was so... Yeah, straw. So you would have had a straw. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I feel for anybody going through that, you know, at the moment. Um, would you suggest an electric toothbrush or a normal toothbrush or doesn't it matter um electric one is definitely better because with a manual one it's very technique sensitive so yeah. to brush your teeth you have to angle it in your gum line and do it in a circular motion and right. move all the way around your teeth with a, a electric toothbrush it does all the round circular motion for you you literally just hold it there buzz it all the way across so i definitely think electric toothbrush and you know <laughs> Mm. And you know some electric toothbrushes, they have really good heads that have got softer bristles on them as well. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, so you can change the heads of them as well. Good to know. So go go softer on it. And so, you know, um, mouthwashes, sometimes you taste, they, they, they can be quite, like you said, strong. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you might not know this, you might not know to answer this. I know that when you're on treatment, there's certain chemicals and stuff that you should really try and avoid. There's nothing in mouthwashes there that would interfere with anything or be harmful. Because when you put it, when you put mouthwash in your mouth, sometimes it is a mm. bit. Yeah. So there is something called SLS. Um, I can't remember the full chemical name of it, but it normally has on the bottle that it hasn't got any SLS on that. And normally that can affect uh, something in your mouth and irritate it a little bit. Most uh, of the new mouthwashes, pretty much none of them have them anymore. There are a f odd few that have them, but right. your Colgate, your Listerine, your Corsadils, they, yeah. most of them don't have them in that. Yeah, it was Corsadil actually that my breast nurse said in their experience, that was the one they had the best. Yeah. Cause they, so, they got the best day out of it. Yeah, so Corsadil focuses on bleeding gums, but very important, Corsadil daily is good, um, but the other Corsadil that's a high concentration, that can actually stain your teeth as well. So uh, limit how, so yeah, so limit how long you can have that for as well. Don't have it for more than two, three weeks. You're best doing Corsadil daily as well. That stains minimal or not much at all. Something else that somebody messaged me about and said, or oh, to ask you was, They've noticed during, treat during treatment that their teeth have yellowed. Yeah. Is that possible? Would that be down to the chemo or is... That's a side effect of everything. I feel like mine have. 
Yeah, so your microbiota has all changed. Your bacteria in your mouth has all changed. The envi- you, it's a completely different mouth inside. So that's what's contributing to that color change as well. The um, only thing about that is a two-in-one is see your hygienist, but it's unlikely that that will make that get any whiter because it's within your enamel that is ch- gone yellow. Um, um, unfortunately, I would not recommend whitening until you're all in the clear and everything, but that's the thing that will probably get rid of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. You wouldn't recommend whitening then, not till. No, not 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 until you've done with your chemo and you're you're all clear, hundred percent, because that can irritate your gums as it is. So definitely not. Yeah, it can make your teeth more sensitive as well, can't it? Yeah, a hundred percent, and you're going to have more complications as well. So no, 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 don't don't do that. Your teeth are looking nice though. Ah, oh, no, they're not... they definitely changed colour a bit. Oh, they look nice and bright. My daughter said to me, if you brush your teeth today, mommy, she said this to me the other month. I was like, oh, <laughs> a bit yellow. I was like, oh, thanks. But do you know what? Natural teeth are yellow. That, no. That's what your teeth are meant to look like. They're meant to look like normally yellow anyway. A little bit yellow, yeah. They're, they're not, yeah, I know. And they shouldn't look as like white as Simon Cow's. I know. <laughs> but just somewhere, in, you know. They weren't turmeric yellow though, were they? No, no. All right, good. No. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so that's all right. See, uh, mine go that because of the curries. No, they don't go that color. Not that bad, but they can do. I've got to sort my whitening out because I love my curries. That's the issue. Oh, I love curry too. So I know. Last week, I was doing an Insta Live with Bow Babe, and I don't know if anybody on here saw, but I had just necked a curry that- with rice. I had a massive... There's something in your teeth. No, yeah. Fine. The whole time. <laughs> and it was only when I went back and I sort of caught myself in the mirror. I was like, what is that? Was that spinach? No, it was black black rice. Oh my God, that is so jokes. I saw that. That was so funny. Uh, I'm just going to... I've had a couple of questions come through. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, also, spot. somebody said, oh yeah, where can I... Where can I buy biotin from? Right. So biotin, uh, there's a mouthwash, there's a moisturiser and there's a toothpaste. And you can actually buy that over the counter. So Boots, um, definitely okay. do it. And try some of the That's over the counter. Um, that helps with your dry mouth. But you know Gel Claire? Yeah. Now, Gel Claire, I researched. I tried to order it as a, a non-dentist. Yeah. Um, so I went on gelclare.co.uk. Now, with that, you need a prescription for that. Now, right. what you do is they've got an email and they've got a telephone number. I think you can call them up and they'll be able to write your pres- private prescription via their website. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or ask your GP if you can get a private prescription because I called up a pharmacy as well. They said they don't, it's private. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right, because I I wonder whether if you're going in and seeing a breast nurse, whether they might be able. They can. So they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll they'll be able to. So speak to your doctor or nurse in the hospital. They'll be able to sort that out. Yeah. Okay. But Joel Claire's Joel Claire's prescription. Yeah. But biotin is for the dry mouth. Yeah. So with biotin, it comes in um, it comes in a mouthwash. So that's just. Rinse when your mouth is dry, that's fine. They have a toothpaste, but that doesn't help with your dry mouth. But one really, really good thing that they do have is that they've got this little tube of gel. You pe- keep it in your handbag and your bag. You just put it on your teeth and it sort- sorts it straight away. It's really convenient when you're going out or something. Right. So, so yeah. what your teeth? On, on your, you swish it around. Literally put it on your finger, put it on your dry area in your mouth and it lubricates it straight away. Right, yeah, because it sounds funny. As somebody that's never um, experienced dry mouth before, it's mm. it is so it could be so painful and debility debility because you do everything by, via speech. So anything mm. through your mouth, it makes the whole of you feel horrible, doesn't it? Um, I didn't suffer with dry mouth too much. Mm. Um, one thing I did get was. Um, my taste buds were really affected, but right. I don't know if there's anything that you can suggest on that. So with um, taste buds changing, um, it's, 
only oral hygiene and give it time. That's that's actually the only thing with regards to that. You know, things like ginger and spices you use, try and use a little bit more extra to get the like salivary flowing, your taste buds working a little bit more. Add a bit more than you would normally use to see if you can get things going. So yeah. that that has been shown to work. Uh, somebody just said I'm on the enlightened. <laughs> somebody's called the enlightened asshole. There you go, my love. Um, oh. On immunotherapy and can't cope with spearmint or anything minty. Would or could you recommend an alternative? So, uh, with regards to chewing gum, have they tried? Che have they tried chewing gum? Don't know. Have you tried chewing gum? But I guess aren't they all minty though? I'm on immunotherapy. I can't can't cope with spearmint or anything I wonder, I wonder why if you can enlightened asshole do so <laughs> um and uh, we'll try try and answer that um, yeah what, what do you say oh he hasn't tried um he said he hasn't tried chewing gum is that yeah, something try you'd suggest then yeah so oh oh sorry i knocked that bit so you know um people that have got a dry mouth, we actually recommend chewing on sugar-free chewing gum and sucking on sugar-free sweets. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So they're, they're, that's dental advice I regularly give to patients that have dry mouth oh. for that. What, you, the sort of saliva? Yeah. It, 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 needs, it, needs some stim it needs as much stimulation as it can to get that saliva out. You know, like getting milk out of breath, like you need to stimulate it out. It's the same with saliva. You need to stimulate it out. Right. That, okay. And probably, yeah. I think mean, the more you do it, the more it kind of like... That's it. So the more you do it, and if it's sugar-free boiled sweets, that's fine. There's no sugar in them and sugar-free chewing gum. So, and you know, chewing gum, minty chewing gum, it's a lot less harsh than the sucking mint sweets as well. You know, like mint, that's really, I think that's quite harsh as well. But chewing gums are a lot more better. And try children's um, chewing gum as well and children's mints as well. They're a lot harsh. Oh, okay. Okay. So his saying is on, oh, can, you, can you read those? That, that's the chemical, the, the drugs that he's on. Might have to look that one up. I'll need to look that one up. I yeah. can look it up quickly. Yeah. So uh, I know that he messaged me earlier to say that he's su really suffering with ulcers. I think it might Odd. be a yeah. problem with more dry mouth, but I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, Give, I, yeah. Joined us, just to recap, because I know a couple of people that have just come, come on here have very recently started treatment um, or about to start treatment. Um, it's really worth get going to see your dentist before um before too long just to get yourself checked and get yourself in on, start, uh cancer treatment and then see a dentist for one reason or, or another um and we don't want anything like holding up your chemo treatment or anything holding up your any sort of it, it, it dental work as well right like it's kind of, and yeah, actually, Helen, I think it was about two years ago that I did have a patient that was referred from a hospital and their chemo was delayed because they had to have teeth taken out before. So it, it's what you said. Yeah. So so I was exactly the same. Um, and, and mine nearly got delayed as well because it took a while. I got, what's it called when it can get affected? I want to say dry rot, dry root, dry... It's pericoronitis when your wisdom tooth can, the gum around it gets infected. Yeah. So and it's a dry, oh, sorry. It's a dry socket when the tooth comes out and it gets infected. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was so painful. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. God, you got that. Yeah. Do you smoke? No. Oh, no. Dry, dry sockets are really, really painful. Honestly, I was like this, like, talk about kick a girl when she's down. I was already... I'd already I'd had my mastectomy, about to start chemo, and they were like the dentist said we're going to have to. Oh, uh, Helen, actually, yeah. you know why you know why you're talking about that. So you know you said you got a dry socket. You know if you have to have your tooth taken out while you're mid chemo and you're on those bisphosphonate drug, you getting a socket that's not healing is as painful, or if not more, than a dry socket. So 
That's because uh, your bone doesn't heal at all. So a dry socket, it can heal. Yeah. But with that mange thing, that bisphos osteoradial necrosis, that's the word for it. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's very important just to get all your elective work done before. Yeah. And or as early as possible. So say like you started chemo. Don't worry. Just let your dentist know. Go for your checkup. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, somebody's laughing at me. <laughs> Victoria's laughing at me because I said that it was dry rot in my mouth. No, it was dry socket. I got it wrong. I don't have dry rot in my mouth. That would be weird. That's yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, Josie is saying that she used milk teeth. Children's yes. Teeth whilst on chemo. That's actually a really good idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. No. So that's the thing so we've got to be a little bit careful with that so it's better than nothing so if it works go for it but you know in chemo you have reduced saliva now yeah. your saliva protects your teeth from getting decay okay yeah now your toothpaste has fluoride to protect against all the decay and everything now children's toothpaste has a lot less concentration of fluoride it's for milk teeth yeah so you need to make sure all do that, but just go for your regular checkups, but keep your sugar intake none or medium or as mild as little as you can. Right, okay. So that's the issue with that. It's the fluoride concentration to protect your teeth. It's a lot less in me milk teeth children's toothpaste. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So yep. I was told to use ah uh, the arms and hammer one. Um I think it was like a bicarbonate toothpaste. Would that bicarbonate be toothpaste. I can't remember the name of that on the top of my head, but that's just as good. That's fine. But make sure there's got fluoride in it, though. But the good thing about the bicarbonate one is that it's less harsh on your teeth because if fluoride-based toothpaste are painful, you've got no choice but to use that one. Right. So okay. it's the risk. It's the risk weighs at, outweighs the benefit. Right. Bottom line is, is if your sugar intake is minimal or zero. Yeah. Don't worry too much. But if it's high, you need you need to think about getting that fluoride on those two, on those two. Okay. Um, what about diet things? You're, you're talking sugar intake there. Mm. You would you recommend to your patients that you know, especially whilst going through cancer treatment, you know, think about X, Y, and Z in your in your diet. Is that something that you mm. conversation about? A hundred percent. So say, for example, you have a can of Coke, OK, and you sip it over two hours. That is so much more damaging than you just cut down in that Coke within one minute because you have to reduce the frequency at which you have sugar. Like don't graze, don't sip it slowly throughout the days because the more you sip it throughout the day, the more your tooth's going to be exposed to that sugar. So it's the frequency. Redu reduce the frequency you have. If you have to have sugar, reduce the frequency. Have it quick, short, sharp, swallow it. That's it. Don't graze on it. But if you can reduce that sugar, like Coke, um, sweets, chocolates, biscuits, reduce it all. If you have to have a sugary drink like fruit juices and smoothie, have a straw so it goes straight to your throat. It doesn't touch your teeth. Now, tomato ketchup and things like that, they have all have hidden sugars in them. You need to watch out for that as well. So it's all hidden sugars that you need to read the label, cut them all out as well. What about, um, you know, earlier on you were saying about sugar-free um, um, chewing gum. What about yes. sugar-free, like Diet Coke, like sugar-free? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's fine. That's better than normal Coke. But don't forget, it's still carbonated. It can still cause a bit of erosion on your teeth if you have a lot of carbonated drinks, right? But have it in moderation. But definitely, it's a lot more better than the sugar-filled fizzy drinks, 100%. Right. And what about natural sugars in, like, dried fruit or fruit juices or whatever? Is that the same? So with, Do it. Okay. Yeah. And then... So with them, in eat them in moderation. So, yeah, they're natural sugars. Yeah, they're not refined. But even fruits and everything, having them in high volumes, it does affect it. But if you have them in nice, healthy, moderation portions then it's absolutely fine to have them. That's no problem. And when someone eats or drinks something sugary, wait 30 minutes to one hour and then brush your teeth because these sugars soften up the enamel and it takes 30 to 60 minutes for your enamel to harden again and then you brush your teeth. Oh, I didn't know that. No one, literally, all my patients, I say that to them, I had no idea about that because it's not enough 
um, exposure about this information. That's the thing. So not many people are aware of that. Because you'd think that if, if you're going to have eaten something like that, it's best to sh brush your teeth straight. Yeah. Like, if, so that can yeah. be harmful. Yeah, very, very harmful because you're brushing a really soft enamel away and it can rip it away, create more sensitivity as well. So right. yeah, wait that 30 to 60 minutes. Brush your teeth just before going to bed. Right. That will keep it simple. And before breakfast, done, okay. sorted. Okay. Now, something else that somebody um, sent to me um, today uh, to mention to you was when she went through chemo, she said that after, so she was on a three-weekly cycle and uh, she would change her toothbrush every cycle because she, she didn't want to sort of reinfect herself. Is that something like, would your toothbrush carry germs that can then give you an infection or because I... if, it, if it's your if it's your own toothbrush that's absolutely fine your so if it's your own that it doesn't spread like that or it won't reinfect it like that again okay. so that's absolutely fine but there's no harm in doing that because you should change your toothbrush i'd say once a month once a, well until your bristles get flat as well there's no harm in changing your toothbrush so yeah. it's better to be safe than sorry so yeah. there's absolutely no harm in doing that right okay a uh, couple of other questions that have just come in. Minnie Mason's asking, can your dentist do anything to your teeth to protect them during chemo, like a fluoride varnish? I've never even heard yep. of that exist. So what we do is um, I do a couple of things based on each individual patient. I can prescribe them a very high fluoride toothpaste, which is only through prescription for your dentist. And the other thing you do, I do actually do fluoride varnish on some patients. So fluoride varnish is for children, is to protect their milk teeth. And if they've got a high sugar intake, it just gives them extra protection. But if an adult needs it, we are able to do that on them as well. So yeah, fluoride varnish is just a little application we do in the surgery. Don't eat for 30 minutes and let it sink in. And that is really good for prevention. So yeah, that's really, really good. It hurts or not? No, no. You should dry your teeth, dry them, dry them, and put it on with like a little micro brush. Done. Almost like nail painting, but on your teeth. Exactly. That's what I say to my children. I say, I'm going to paint your teeth now. And they're like, okay, great. And do you, know what, do you know what the good thing about it is? They come in really nice flavors. They come in banana, toffee, cherry, strawberry, watermelon. Yeah. That's I know. That I'd love to do. A bit like paint by numbers. I'd be like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a question. Um, and Jamie is asking, does radiotherapy affect teeth and gums? Oh, hi, Jane. I know Jane. Jane's my mom's friend. So, oh, yeah. Oh. So, Jane, it depends where you're getting your radiotherapy. So if it's around your head and neck, it will really affect the bone. So, for example, like I said, if you needed a tooth taken out, for example, it will really affect the bone of the area. If you're getting um, radiotherapy, anything from like your chest down, don't worry too much about that. It's more from your head and neck region. That's when you should be worried. But anything down there, don't worry too much about that. But still let your dentist know, obviously, about what treatment you've got. Yep. So, Jane, I hope that helps. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't really get any sort of mouth side effects from radio. Um, the other thing I think affected my mouth was the fact that so where I was pushed into an early menopause, everything. Mm. I, I don't know mm. whether menopausal women come to you to say, go through the menopause and my mouth feels like affected. No. So with menopause, one thing I found is that your gums do change a lot. So I have noticed quite a lot of recession in my patients that have got have had menopause and they do get dry mouth. So every gum recession. Yeah, I've I've yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you see? So menop uh, menopause is really stressful on a woman's body. It really, really is. It has so many effects and dry mouth. And gums, I have, I've seen it with my eyes, it's affected it, because I've seen oral hygiene is immaculate. They've been coming to me regularly, but within like two or three years, the gums have receded a bit. Wow. With that oral hygiene, we can't really do much, just keep your teeth as clean as you can, see your hygienist as well. But with the dry mouth, if you're having chemo and menopause, it's hard. Yeah. It, it, will, be, it will be difficult, but just your, as dentists, we can also prescribe you some uh, saliva substitute. Orthana is a really good one that I prescribe and I've had really good feedback from that. That's prescription only. Orthana, yeah. And that doesn't contain any sort of estrogen or anything like that in it? No, no, no. It's just a saliva substitute. Um, right. Now, Charlotte Kitters is asking, any tips 
or having some ulcer busters to hand or soothe as something to keep it keep it at bay um so like i said before only temporarily is aurigel but bongella i've had really good feedback and i've used that on myself as well mm. um your gp would be the only one that can prescribe you steroids if they do get really really bad but that's something for you to discuss with them because i've got too much information about that so one one thing that i found um was quite handy is boots do like a bongella but it's in a it's in a it's in a pen like stick like this yeah mm. and twizzle the end twist it and it yeah. comes out yeah it come up on the top so what you can do is you can get to the parts of your mouth that easier it, it much easier and if you're out on the go and you don't want to be sort of applying mm. it because you can't clean your hands or whatever this yeah thing, and in fact it became people thought that when i was doing the school runs and stuff that i had like one of those <laughs> rats or something in my hand because i could throw it <laughs> and then oh. i talk like i don't smoke it's somebody else's <laughs> Because it was that bad. Um, oh, that is so funny. Uh, so I hope that um, helps, Kitters. Josie, what advice can you give for general good oral hygiene after chemo if your taste buds are still affected and mouth is a bit sensitive? I wonder whether it's cut. For what I did, I kind of kept doing the same thing as I was doing during chemo. Like I. I kept everything very um, mild, <laughs> mild and gentle. But what would you say? Um, with the basic oral hygiene? Yeah. So like with that, so what was that, Helen? It got cut off a little bit. Oh, sorry. Um, like post chemo. Oh, yeah. So post, do you know what? Oral hygiene is exactly the same before, during and after. It's, just the, it's the brushing twice a day. Um, but if you can see your hygienist, because when your mouth is feeling a little bit better, you've probably got a build up in areas that you don't know you've got. So I recommend booking an appointment with a hygienist just to get a proper thorough clean of that and then hopefully maintain it afterwards. Flossing, mm -hmm. remember, clean between your teeth, two yeah. minutes morning and night, spit, don't rinse. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, um, Joe, I know you asked a question earlier about things that you can do before you start treatment. I would would you agree that going to a hygienist is probably a good thing to do? Yeah. To go into it. Hundred percent. If your if your gums are clean and you've got no dental issues, hundred percent. But you know, without chemo and everything, if someone's got gingivitis, if they're smoking, their gums are so sore. So, guys, if you're smoking, stop the smoking and stop the alcohol because mm. that. That, that affects your gums. I'm talking about going tea total while you're doing it, if you can. Really? God. Yeah. Oh, was, was it um, Audrey? Is that Audrey's? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, ma use mouthwash at least 30 to at least an hour after brushing your teeth. Because if you yes. use mouthwash straight after brushing your teeth, yeah. you're washing away the toothpaste. Oh, fucker. Yeah. Oh my God, Helen, have you been have you been doing it straight after? Well, to be fair, I ran out of mouthwash so long ago. I only bought <laughs> I can. Uh... Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, no, no, you're not the only one, Helen. No one, uh, literally, hardly anyone knows that. You're not that, the only one because everyone's in that habit. Yeah, that's. I, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Do you want to know when I do it? Just to yeah. keep it simple, I just do it after my lunch. Oh, okay. Like, like I eat my lunch at the start of the hour then at yeah. the end of my lunch I just do a quick swig before I go back to work right. like not swallow it rinse it and spit it yeah 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 so just randomly I know you just said about people smoking so you obviously get sometimes you get people come in and they've got stinky breath do you do you wear the masks so all this uproar about everyone wearing masks because I keep thinking dentists wear them every single day like forever. I know people need to chill out I know. <laughs> out right but do you wear the mask so that you don't I always think are you wearing that because you don't want to smell my breath or are you wearing that because you don't want me to smell your breath no we wear them so we don't like inhale any of the aerosols in in there it's nothing to do with smelling because oh. trust me Helen trust me 
that mask does not block the smell. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's just to make sure we don't get anything in our like in our, in, in our yeah. So when you're concentrating, sometimes I've been known to like if I'm really concentrating on something, I dribble sometimes. Yeah. So, as a dentist, when you're leaning over somebody, like really like concentrating, yeah, dribble on them. So anyway, oh, it stops it. We digress. Oh, Kitty is saying some mouthwashes can stain your teeth. What's the best stain-free mouthwash? So um, Oral-B mouthwashes are excellent. I, I've had really good feedback. I use Oral-B myself. I've uh, been using it for a long time. So, yeah, definitely go it's through not, them. They're really good. not really expensive either, is it? No, 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 no. Not at all. No. Okay. Right. Has anybody else got any... Um, questions i'm just just to make sure i haven't missed it helen you know yeah. you know you know literally i just finished a diploma in mindfulness right because oh. yeah yeah and did you know that there was literally an entire chapter in that about patients on chemotherapy is that right yeah what did so you mindfulness and dentistry or is this like completely on the side you did? oh this is just something on the side because i just I know my, I've heard such good things about mindfulness. I just did it for my own mental and physical health because I've yeah. heard of the it's got amazing benefits. But there was an in, there was an entire I'll send it to you because I've yeah. saved it in the area because it, it's got so many health benefits. It helps patients while they're going through chemo, so it helps it helps manage the pain and everything. And it's, it's they've got papers to prove that it helps with that as well. Um, apparently, Fine. so I'll email I'll. I'll dig through it and I'll email you. But that's one thing that stood out for me. And since I've been doing mindfulness properly, it's helped me mentally and physically with everything. I'm so much more happy. And it has got health benefits as well. But it really stuck out for me that it was chemotherapy. And I did think of you. Oh. Um, it was only, it was, yeah, it was only last week I did that. And it, I think it comes under lifestyle. Yeah, I think it does. And I think yeah. that when you're, when you're sort of catapulted into, into the you know when you get given a diagnosis it's kind of fight or flight at the thing it's like okay yeah okay, i'm gonna have the surgery i'm gonna have, i'm gonna lose a boob okay i'm gonna go and have chemo right da, 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 da. but you don't actually come up for breath at any point so so no one tells you about going to see your dentist and and you yeah know, or hygiene and, da, da, da. and by not doing that your complications can get worse it, it can make the experience even more rubbish than or what is already a rubbish sandwich. A hundred percent, yeah. This side of it is really important because it's another thing that's not addressed enough is just actually how are you? And, and yes, and I yeah. say here a lot that you kind of not intentionally, but you're made to feel like that you're lucky to be like alive and you're being treated and you're going to be all right and da But it's like yeah, but this thing in my body that was trying to kill me. You know, it's like, it's mm. why such a high number of people go through PTSD um, mm. after getting a cancer uh, diagnosis, and it tends to kick in after treatment's finished, which is really mm. you know, interesting. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. I think mindfulness is... And actually, I knew that I was stressed going through my treatment because I was waking up with a really sore jaw and I was obviously grinding, grinding. gritting my teeth you know? right that must be something as well that other cancer patients I expect probably yeah some do you want some a few home remedies for that very very simple is um a soft diet until the pain is a bit elevated um, you can massage this area here. It's really, really good to do that. Um, hot and cold packs, like yeah. you use a hot water bottle and uh, anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or whatever. And there's also really, really good exercises on YouTube called TMJ exercises. TMJ is the name of this joint here. So oh. it's your tempor yeah, temporomandibular yeah. joint. Yeah. And then if you YouTube TMJ exercises, when just watch it once or twice then you just do it in front of the tv because i suffer from grinding a lot right. and and obviously get your night guard made as well right. um if you can from your dentist but these home remedies have really helped and reduce that stress um if you can do you ever recommend going to see a chiropractor 
I'm seeing one next week. <laughs> uh, interesting. So I saw a cut. My my, uh, yeah. my chiropractor, and and I swore by going to see her during it because yeah, yeah. whatever she does in your mouth to relieve whatever it is she's doing, it's bloody. Yeah. It really worked. Really helped relieve headaches and sort of painful jaw. Did you get pain here as well? Did you get all your pain around your neck? No, not really. No. Yeah, okay, okay. But I yeah. had headaches and sore, you know, sort of sore jaw. Oh, right. oh God. Anything else? Uh, mindfulness. Oh, yeah, great things for a bad day. Yeah, you're right. Mindfulness is so important. Um, salt water mouth wash, somebody was suggesting. Um, yeah, that's really good. Really, really, yeah. I recommend that. Oh, the booby bunch said that she sucked on an ice pop while starting her transfusion for the first 15 minutes. I wonder why you did that. I wonder if that's for dry mouth. It's actually, it's probably... So, those, uh, they have, is it ice bars? I think they're called. They really help soothe the pain for um, mouth ulcers and really... Uh, ice sticks? I can't remember what they are called, but they're really, really good for that. You know how, like, ice numbs up your skin a bit? It's yeah. for that, and it's really, really good. Yeah. Somebody else saying a um, dissolvable paracetamol and a salt wash helped. Yeah. Um, Pain that... Oh, manuka honey, somebody suggested on ulcers. Oh, yep. I had very strong. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, she was on very strong um, chemo, um, and she, she used manuka honey. From the okay. Yeah. Have you ever... it's, it's it's organic. I haven't come across that before. No. No. But if it, if it helps and there's no chemicals in it, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cavita Blue, would you recommend biotin? Yes, we were talking about it earlier, and absolutely, that was something that Aminda uh, definitely re recommended. Yeah. Um, an Aura Gel, Nick Nat Blue. So. Yeah. Say um, Aura Gel. Yeah, and she'll be the expert because she probably gets um, yeah. those quite a lot. So yeah. I, everybody's found that helpful. I've definitely learned lots of things, even like even if whether you're going through cancer treatment actually or not, it's just really important. Yeah. Good oral health. And you know what? We've had a really steady number of people watching this, and I was really interested because I thought, sounds really dull. Yeah. Really not. And I had so many people messaging me asking me questions about yeah. find out about this, that and the other. So I really, really appreciate it. And I wonder whether it's something, you know, we do again further down the line. There might be more things that come up. Um, oh, Helen, yeah, 100%. I'm always available. And I just, I think it's really nice because people aren't aware of this stuff and it's just so nice for them to be informed about it. Yeah, definitely. And and it's like I, I say as well a lot that it's just nice to know that there are choices out there and things that you can yeah. do to help the situation that you're in. Um, so, yeah. So, Amarita, thank you so much. I will be putting this on my grid and I will tag you in on it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'll send it on to you as well. And I shall meet We've you. We've got to do this again, Helen. Definitely. Well, let's meet for a cup of coffee as well at some point. Yes. Um, yes. Look after yourself. Yeah, and you. And thank you ever so much for everybody that joined us. I really, really appreciate um, your time and your support on that. All right. Loads of love, everybody. See you later. Bye.